you hear a lot of people are really freaked out about this idea, this meme of singularity. Some call it the rapture of the nerds. They feel like technologists have hijacked the Christian story of God and heaven and the afterlife and just translate it into the language of electronic technology and synthetic intelligence and mastering the information processes of biology so that we can engender and engineer our own godhood. But I don't really think that that's a problem. I mean, those religious myths that we have been caught up in for centuries reflect our yearnings to transcend our own limits. You know, as Ernest Becker says, we are gods with anuses. With our minds, we can ponder the infinite, yet we're housed in these heart-pumping, breath-gasping, decaying body. So to be godly yet creaturely sort of imbues the human condition with a sort of bittersweet, sort of exquisite pain quality to it that sort of in a way drives our creativity, our desire to transcend all previous limits, to, to, to transform the world in our own image comes from our desire to escape the death sentence that makes us ultimately food for worms. So I think that the singularity as a meme that reflects the sort of acceleration of the human design process to the point of achieving a kind of infinite velocity where everything becomes linked with everything else and matter becomes mind, where we impregnate the universe with intelligence, as Eric Davis has written. You know, today technologists are these ecstatic technicians of the sacred. They're figuring out how awareness works, how the self emerges. Can we create non-biological intelligence? Can we create sentience in a different substrate that is not bound by the limits of biology? We are the frontal lobes of the universe, if we are the eyes and ears of the universe, if we are a way for the cosmos to know itself, as Carl Sagan says, then our desire to transcend all previous limits is the universe's desires uh, therein. So I don't think there's anything unnatural about that. And so for that reason, I think the idea of the singularity is awesome. When I started using computers, there are only about a dozen computers in all of New York City. Now we all carry multiple computers in our pockets and our belts. But computation is a lot more pervasive than these gadgets we carry around. Take this rock, for example. It doesn't look like it's doing very much, but it has trillions of trillions of atoms and molecules in here. They're all moving around, bouncing against each other at incredibly high speeds. That's computation. Now, it's not very useful today. It's organized kind of randomly. We can't communicate with it very well. But we're going to change that. We're going to reorganize the vast amount of computation in this rock to make it useful. And it won't just be raw computation. We'll infuse it with exquisitely intelligent software vastly greater than our intelligence today. And with all the knowledge of the human machine civilization, this rock is going to be a trillion, trillion times more powerful than all biological human brains today. This is going to be quite a valuable rock. We call matter and energy reorganized in this way, computronium. We're going to reach these limits late in this century. And at that time, we're going to turn many of the rocks and other stuff suitable for computation into computronium. And so, to keep the expansion of our intelligence going, we will then need to spread out to the rest of the universe, turning some portion of it into computronium. How fast can we do this? That depends on whether or not we can transcend or otherwise get around the speed of light as a limit. There are suggestions that there may be subtle ways of doing this. One possibility is to send intelligent nanobots through wormholes, which are basically shortcuts to apparently faraway places through other spatial dimensions beyond the three we're familiar with. Wormholes through space appear to be consistent with our understanding of physics. If it is indeed feasible to either find or build such wormholes, our intelligence will be so great that we'll be capable of engineering these shortcuts to reach other parts of the universe in brief periods of time. In that case, we could infuse the universe with our intelligence rather quickly. It would require only another century, that is by the end of the 22nd century, to saturate the universe with computronium. On the other hand, if we can't get around the speed of light, it'll take a lot longer. But in either case, expanding our intelligence throughout the universe is our ultimate destiny. Cosmologists today argue about whether the universe will die in fire or ice. Fire means a big hot crunch, basically the opposite of the Big Bang. Ice means stars flying apart, eventually dying out. Both of these views of cosmology assume that intelligence has nothing to do with it. 
that intelligence is just a bit of entertaining froth that dances in and out of the dumb celestial forces that rule the universe. But this perspective ignores the law of accelerating returns. As a result of the exponential expansion of our knowledge and skill, the universe will ultimately be infused with computronium and with the vast intelligence of our human machine civilization. So the universe will wake up and we will intelligently decide its fate. There was something so pleasant about that place And your emotions echo in so much space Ooh. And then you're out there without care Yeah, I was out of touch But it wasn't because I didn't know that Just knew too much. Who said that? Godless globalization into a one-world nation is being achieved through the manipulation of carnal temptations by corporations unwittingly constructing a world to the devil's exact configuration. But little did they know of his aspiration for mass spiritual annihilation by promising worldly success while destroying their final destination. I ask, who will we blame when it was all built upon our choice regardless of his manipulation? goal of the scheme to enslave hearts of men. Enslave to construct the evolution of men, and to play out a plan laid down by those who descend. Misguiding misguided souls to be one once again. A rat race to the next root race a singularity of men. Connecting minds of mankind combined equate to the evolution of men. But in the end it's deception by the great deceiver of men who aims not elevation but for our souls to descend. To be enslaved to the lower self upon our flesh we depend. Turning man into parasite consuming our planet to its end. Through injection of materialism into minds to enslave hearts of men. We were fooled like this before, and we are being fooled like this again. We were all the soul of one man before being scattered to souls of men, to be placed inside our bodies throughout time until the end. And now as the souls of man descend we are coming closer to the end. And as we come closer to the end I pray before then I come to comprehend.